back for our next episode on safety and security with Brenda Sanford, Superintendent of Schools for Red Oak ISD. Last time we talked a little bit about facilities. This episode, let's talk a little bit about some of the processes and practices, some of the things that are going on behind the scenes, if you will, starting with our emergency operations plan, our EOP. We have uh, that emergency operation plan in place. We review it annually. Actually, we review it more than annually. Okay. We have uh, committees, safety and security committee meetings that we go over those things, you know, periodically. We talk about any deficiencies we might have. Uh, any needs, gaps that we might have, and we address those. Uh, we work hand in hand with um, our other facilities and uh, other entities, mm -hmm. you know, our cities and, and county and different emergency personnel. And we get their input as well mm -hmm. during those committee meetings to see what is it we need to tweak and what do we need to really change to make sure we are top notch in the area of safety for our students and staff. The emergency operations plan has a, numerous elements in it. Yes. Part of it is reunification. Um, but the beginning of it is what we call our, our standard response protocols. Yes, yes. Talk a little bit about those five elements and how those differentiate and how we respond to those as, as, a, as a district right. and a campus. We practice those a lot. Mm -hmm. We have that app that's wrapped around it. It will go off periodically throughout the day, regularly. throughout the week, regularly. We do our lockdowns, we do our secures, we do our holds, our evacuate, and our shelter in mm -hmm. place. Those are all done according to what's going on. Is there a need for us to keep the students in the classroom? Do we have an event going on in the actual building, mm -hmm. a medical event even, that we don't need our students walking into the hallways? So do right. we have our students at that point, you right. know, on hold in the classrooms? Do we actually uh, have a lockdown situation where we need to lock all exterior doors in order to not allow someone into the building. Um, do we need a shelter in place for, mm -hmm. you know, um, emergency weather, you know, things sure, such as that? Uh, do we need to evacuate because of uh, something going on, fire, smoke, um, the smell of something in the building that doesn't mm -hmm. seem safe? So those are all our responses that we, we practice. I'm telling you, the students sometimes I think could do it without mm -hmm, us mm -hmm. because we do practice those so often and make sure that they're not afraid to. You know, we, right. we practice them enough to where if, hey, all of a sudden a shelter in place is called, the kids are right on it, you know, and they, they jump in there and they know what to do. Uh, we use that Raptor system to be able to track our students, you know, during that time and our staff, mm -hmm. any visitors that we have. That's why it's so important checking in and out. Even we do that ourselves yes. when we check in and out of the um, campuses to make sure we want to be accounted for as well when we're there. What takes place in class? When you're in a secure, the students are still working. You know, they're still like just normal, sure. just not letting them out of the classroom. Right. So they're still just kind of like you and I. If they're, if they're group working, they're group right. working. Uh, they're not having to, you know, be completely silent. Sure. If you go into a lockdown, you do not want anyone to know you're in the room. That's when the teachers are turning the lights off. Mm -hmm. They're getting everyone to a safe location. There's no talking in the classroom. Uh, so that if someone happened to lean up against that door and listen, there's no indication there's anyone in the classroom. So definitely a totally different look in mm -hmm. the secure and the lockdown. When we go to lockdown, it is a locks lights out of sight. Yes. But our students um, have responded very well. They and our have. staff as well. So we talked a little bit about that, but let's talk a little bit about the uh, School Behavior Threat Assessment Program. Yes. It's an, yes. It's an evolving program as well. It is. Um, and we use an app for that, and we have um, a team that works through those incidents. So talk a little bit about that. Yes. Actually, we call it Stop It, mm -hmm. and um, it, is a, it is a great app because um, someone can get on there if they have an issue with bullying, mm -hmm. if they they see something that they feel like could be a threat, if they hear something. You know, we, we're always saying that if you hear something, report it. If you right. see something, report it. Right. Be proactive. Uh, they can go on there and do it anonymously uh, so that, you know, there's no fear of any type of retaliation right. or anything like that. It's, it's so hands-on and so simple to do it. Parents can get on there and do it. The students can get on there and do it. It's used it throughout our used. district. I mean, it if you used. track it, it's amazing the number of things that, for the most part, turn out not to be something. Right. But if one thing turned out to um, be effective in deterring something happening in our school, it's all worth it. So definitely mm. Stop It is an app that we try to continue to educate people on, let our parents know it's there. Um, we have, you know, groups that monitor it constantly. So it's, it's a great app to use. Yeah, we did a big push in the fall. Yes, we did. see something, say something, making yes. sure the parents knew that Stop It is the app to report any suspicious incidents or behaviors yes. or anything that they see that they would like the district to look into. Absolutely. Um, we'll talk a little bit next time about a couple other topics. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.